All right, so we're gonna go through like 10 of my favorite maps in Call of Duty history. I have a little list on my computer that uh, I have like my top 10 ranked. I had to go through all the maps and the Call of Duty since COD 4 because you know, I didn't play COD 1 and COD 2 while I played them. I know there's a lot of like offsprings of the two. I played them when I was younger, but not like online or anything, just the campaigns. So uh, I got this list here. So what do you guys think I'm gonna go first, you know? Well, first of all, I want to say the best maps or the best Call of Duty's four maps, like the best like consistency, I think are Advanced Warfare, Black Ops 1, and uh, COD 4. Uh, COD 4, I don't have any favorite maps from that. Advanced Warfare, I have a couple. So COD 4, you're not going to see any from. Uh, you're going to see some from everything else on here, even MW3, even though I hate that fucking game. Obviously, I haven't even put Black Ops 4, which is supposed to come out tonight as far as the beta goes. So I'm excited for that, and I want to get this video out because I'm going to wait a couple days to uh, give my review on the beta. Just, I don't want to give anything off of, like, you know, the honeymoon phase, or, like, just, you know, like, because obviously, I don't know if I'm going to snipe on this beta or just red gun, because I don't want to have to stress myself out about sniping. Also, obviously, the real game lies within the red gunning, so I might just red gun the entire beta, uh, just to get a feel for, like, all the new innovations with, like, the health and the stem packs. I feel like you don't really get, like, the, the real feel with the uh, red gunning, so. And I keep forgetting that I don't have these games downloaded. <laughs> Uh, so, okay, here we go. First stop, Call of Duty Ghost. As far as this game goes for a map, it's by far the worst and the least consistent. Because you have good maps like this, uh, Tremor, Octane, and a couple other maps that are pretty mediocre. This map is incredible, but then every other map is really shitty. So, I'm going off of not just for sniping for these maps, but I also love S&D on this map. Whenever I played this game a lot... S and D was just like every S and D was all I played literally. So a lot of these maps go from like S and D and TDM and stuff like that. A lot of, I know I have a really unpopular opinion as far as maps go. In my opinion, maps are the most important thing whenever it comes to Call of Duty. Like this game at its core is really nice, but like the hit detection is incredible. But as far as the maps go, the maps ruin this game, and that's just a fact. The maps and the, how the kill streaks work is just it's a real Debbie Downer. But this map, there's a lot of fling points. Uh, this mid right here makes for a lot of good clips, and I like where the A and B bomb are placed. I'm sure if you play this, you know exactly where they're at. But uh, and you have like the special score streak that is kind of like it's called a I think it's a chem strike, and it like turns this map into like this whole like rubble like post apocalyptic post nuke map, which is really cool. We've never seen that in Call of Duty until this. This game had a lot of map specific score streak, map exclusive score streaks, which I really liked about this game. But uh, this is the only COD Ghost map that's going to be in here. Now we're kicking it back old school. No top 10 map is complete without firing range. One of the most popular maps and one of the most remade maps. This map is so versatile. Down here you have one of the bombs. And over on the other side of the trailer you have one of the bombs. And it's just amazing for all around gameplay. There's a lot of clips. Spawns are a bit inconsistent you know you, sometimes you have people spawn back there some people sometimes you have people spawn back here you can have spawn people spawn in the back with the ammo crates and the car and stuff like that but it just makes for good clips the amount of triples i've hit right here and the amount of clips i've hit on uh you know i kind of like i think bo2 did a better job with the remakes than any other game did like i like uplink more than i like summit i like studio more than i like firing range i don't know why but the setting and bo2 they just did it perfectly I think no game could remaster. I know that's a really popular opinion, but I really do believe that. Okay, next stop, number eight. Okay, so number eight is actually DLC for the newest Call of Duty. It's called Dunkirk. I'm sure you all have played this map as if, you know, it is the newest Call of Duty. And this map is incredible. You know, you always have good maps like Favela or High Rise that are good for, like, getting Moabs or nukes or whatever. And this map, I feel like, is the best in the game alongside like you know v2 and stuff for getting v2 rockets just because i'd say that if you're a sniper obviously gustav and uss texas are the easiest but this it makes for the most enjoyable news there's a lot of tactical play to it you know you just can't run in open fields and just snipe for days or sit on top of you know really op place with the high ground like you can on gustav Gustav is really easy, but, you know, you just have a lot of dumb shit. Also, it's a terrible map for anyone that's not a sniper, because you're basically forced to snipe on it. But a good part about this, you know, you have the B flag down here, C flag in the back, A flag back there. Hold up, I'm making a video. 
and it's, just, it's really enjoyable for all play styles. You can go up there and snipe or use an LMG. You can rush back into the spawn with a submachine gun like I'm doing here. And I mean, this map is nothing without this infamous spawn shot. You come back here, you wreck five dudes before coming in here. They all line up perfectly back here in the spawn. And then if you kill them there, you can just turn around, kill them here. And there's also a really nice spawn shop as far as sniping goes back here. It's really easy to control spawns and just destroy people and keep going on good streaks on here. The Battle V2 rockets I've dropped on this map are, I've, I've dropped a lot. It's a really good map. You know, this it's one of the most underrated Call of Duties. Not the most, obviously. I think Infinite Warfare and Advanced Warfare are the most underrated. I think they're both better than this game, but I really enjoy this game, and I enjoy all the DLC maps and events that come with it. I bet you guys didn't think you'd see this game on the list, but there, there's a good reason why. I'm sure you guys know what map I'm going to. There's a good reason as to why this map has a place on this list. This is another map that is an absolute necessity to a top 10 Call of Duty maps of all time. I mean, we've seen this three different times, I think. MW2, this is where this map originated. And I feel like, obviously, we all like MW2 more than this game, but the map itself in this game, it's obviously, you know, uh, originated around and built for wall running and all the jump packs and stuff. But I generally like this map a lot more than the MW2 and MW3 remakes. Obviously, this map is ugly as fuck in MW3 because that game is ugly as hell. In MW2, it looks a lot better, but obviously you have the, uh, I think it's the A-Flag spawn shot over there. We can sit there and spawn trap people. You also have people camping on Red Roof with noob tubes. Uh, so even though I like MW2 as a game more, I like the core of the game a lot more. This game, this map plays so well. If you haven't played it, you should. Obviously, there are a lot of differences. The colors are a lot different. It's a lot more futuristic. And as far as differences, though, you have this right here. This whole, like, shack wall that you, sh you I don't even know if you can shoot through it or not. Uh, but I think it's to prevent people from obviously just jump jumping and killing people with that And I don't think you can shoot through the plane anymore on here And I think that's a huge difference, but the biggest difference to me. Okay, you can a little bit I'll come show come back here and show you guys one of the one of the most important differences If you played SND on this map Obviously it was impossible to come up here and run through the plane because you'd have people camping on a little ledge That's here in MW2 and people would just camp here and the only way up it is to just jump up it and climb up a ladder in MW2 But in this game, it's not there and you can just And you can just use your jump pack to just jump up and thrust jump basically to where you know You can surprise people a lot easier rather than them just sitting down there going prone and waiting for you to just crawl up a ladder where it's basically unless you're playing against straight up potato and retards it's impossible to climb up it let's be honest okay so this map i don't have mw2 i don't feel like getting my xbox 360 out and showing you guys mw2 but i just have some gameplay that i ripped off of youtube i'll give credit to whoever posted it but uh high rise is an amazing map it's amazing for all players and there's a lot of stuff like the spawn shot you can do. Uh, you can noob tube off of the entire roof. That It's a really cool Easter egg. You get up there, there's teddy bears on it. There are a lot of weird steps to get on top of the roof, but obviously it's become a huge staple. A lot of people know about it. And it's just an amazing map for all game styles. And it's easy to, you know, if your team's down by something, you can, you know, restructure your gameplay. If you're rushing the right side and you guys are losing, you're like, okay, it's time to rush the left side or it's time to go underneath or it's time to sit back and camp and get a few kills to get your team back in the game. It's a really nice thing. The only thing I don't like in it in pubs as far as TDM goes is the underneath passage where you can travel underneath the ground. I don't really like that, but for competitive and for S&D, it is a really, really fun map. So, you know, travel so many different ways. There's a lot of ways to flank, and there's a lot of spawn shots, and the spawns are pretty good and pretty consistent in this game. I, I really like it. There are two mon main spawn points, one at A, one at C, and the spawns really do remain there. It's just a what part of those spawns are they spawning from, because it's always, you know, two main spawn shots and two main spawns that, you know, people spawn from. And you can also get on top of this huge construction banging the jig where it's like this huge crane. You can get on that and trick shot. It is all around just an amazing map. And I'm sure all of you would agree. All right, now we're starting to crack into the top five and here we have Takeoff. I feel like this is better than the Black Ops 1 uh, original stadium just because I just love the look of Black Ops 2 a little bit more. Even though I'm a huge Black Ops 1 fan, I feel like the graphics and the, just the remakes and the futuristic. But this map is all around perfect for everything. s &D, it's amazing. Sniping, it's incredible. Spawns are really consistent. It's a really tactical map in my opinion. And the fact that there's two versions of it really makes it makes it a huge staple in the Call of Duty. You know, it's not a huge fan favorite. I feel like for trick shotting, it was a must. Everyone loved this map for trick shotting. This map is just an incredible map. It's a really overlooked map, 
Uh, not that you know a lot of people don't like it. I just feel like a lot of maps are really underrated, especially the number one spot is the most underrated map ever. No one talks about it. I swear they don't. But yeah, top five. It's so worthy of it. If you guys play this, you know, let me know how what you guys think of it. I always had a good time on this map. But you know, occasionally there weren't good times, just like any map. Okay, a lot of these maps on this list, on my personal list, have been either remade or revamped in other Call of Duties, and this is absolutely no exception. Obviously, this is a really popular map, fan favorite, and it's been remastered, and I think it's, has it been remastered in BO3? I think it has. I could be wrong, but it obviously came back as Uplink in BO2, and I think Uplink's a bit better just because... Obviously, I like the look of BO2 a bit more, and I like the colors more. I already talked about that in takeoff and firing range. Uh, I feel like the Black Ops 2 did a better job with these maps than BO1 did, even though I like BO1 more. But this game, this map, you know, you can control spawns really well. It's good for S and D, really good for domination, and obviously, it's a great pub stomping map. You can control spawns and spawn traps really well. If you just sit here and destroy people, and you have someone sitting over there destroying people just in case, they're not leaving spawn. You do not spawn on this map unless you're spawning back there and in the back of the map over there. These spawns do not fluctuate very often i swear they don't and that's why i didn't pick a lot of cod 4 maps because i feel like you can just sit there and get spawn trap for days on every single cod 4 maps especially with frag times three and stun by threes you you are you are not leaving the spawn in that game and that's why i didn't put any of the maps in here okay so now we're getting into the top three and it's an iron sharpers iron world out there in call of duty maps there are a lot of amazing ones so make it into the top three is a really hard tax but this is a really unpopular opinion i've never seen gameplay on this map i'll have to look it up i just played it myself never seen a clip on this map never seen much gameplay on it but it's perplex from advanced warfare it came out in one of the dlcs i'm not sure i don't even know the name of the packs i just go by numbers i don't even know what it is but this map i remember when i first started playing call of duty and competitive i would sit here and practice on bots for hours on end myself versus six box on the other team all veteran and sit here and just practice s and d on this map 24 7. it is a really overlooked map it's like a bunch of australian apartment complexes as far as i remember i haven't played it in years but this map is incredible if you haven't played it not encouraging you to buy the dlc because obviously no one gives a fuck about this game even when it came out no one cared but uh, it's a really good map very overlooked okay and the second best map in cod history is resistance from mw3 aka also known as occupation from world war ii this came out in the resistance dlc i only know that because of the map name but uh, whenever I played MW3, obviously that game is ugly as hell. I always thought, you know, what would it look like with more color? And this is it. It's just, it's a better version. I don't understand how people can, you know, you're looking at this. Everything is green and gray on MW3. On here you have some reds, blue, greens, gray, fucking every color of the rainbow. And this is not the most, I would have liked to see this come back in either BO2. And obviously they're not going to do that because of, you know, the old franchise and it's split up between infinity war and treyarch and this is obviously an infinity war map even though sledgehammer remastered this which not sure how that was made possible but this map is honestly so beautiful it's so good for almost every single game mode it's my favorite map in this game and i hit that really nice springfield clip the quad feet times four on the b flag this map it's just a masterpiece and obviously in mw3 there were a lot of tricks to where you can get on top of the buildings and bounce off and trick shot and this game this map it's iconic it really is it's not a lot of people's favorite but for me it's it's an amazing map it's obviously very iconic the first map i played on the first memory i have of call of duty is playing this map on mw3 and yeah that's all i gotta say a very well-rounded map good for all play styles a lot of flank points you can even camp in there or you can hide behind the door over there this map is just it's honestly such a masterpiece i love this map so much and the best map in cod history goes to radiation from black ops one one of the first maps we had that you could actually be interactive with the map i'm trying to think of one before this but let me show you what i'm talking about you could walk up these staircase and up here you have a panel with a button that allows you to open and close these doors where oh the door switch is unavailable for some reason not sure why it's doing that but you could open and shut this door and down there is b flag and i'm pretty sure there's also a bomb down there and let, let me see let me see what happens when you get down there Okay, so when you get down there, there are two buildings, this little shack and this little shack. There are staircases down here. This one comes from the one above, and you can flank down here from the spawn, the other spawn, the stair, the ladder, 
and this ladder right here and it just it makes for awesome gameplay because you never know where people are going to come from and it's not unpredictable like our Dennis Forest or I guess it is a little bit but the like if you have someone trapped in that spawn they're probably going to come through here or come through there and you automatically have a line of sight or they could fiddle with the doors and stuff and drop in from above so this map I am a fucking dog on this map dude score streaks are incredible on this map sometimes you have people posted up in there which is the only issue in this lobby there aren't a whole lot of campers in this game and if they are they're easily accessible a lot of flame points in there a lot of flame points in here a lot of flame points up to there and everything is pretty much easily wall bangable just this game this map is the most overlooked map this and Ivana are so overlooked this game is overlooked. It's like it's known as you know a good Call of Duty. No one ever complains about it, but it should be known as the best, and it really should be. A lot of people think it is. I think it is. This map. Just take one good look at it. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get out of here real quick. Look at this. Look at the outside of this map. You have stuff interacting over there, moving outside of the map. I mean, how often do you see stuff like this? Interactive in the middle. This map is just. It really is so good, and it makes me pissed off when people don't have it in their top 10. I mean, everyone's entitled to their own opinion, but this map never had a single bad time on this map that I can remember of. This plays, look at this, cross map tomahawks, it's good for sniping, great for S&D, great for domination, great for TDM. Uh, it's just, it's such a good map. So anyways, I'm going to wrap this up. I hope you guys agreed with a lot of this. Even though some of these maps I'm sure you guys never even heard of. Especially Perplex. That map is not popular by any stretch of the imagination. But I want to hear what you guys think. Leave your top 10 in the comment section below. Give me your feedback. I know there's going to be a lot of motherfuckers telling me to kill myself in a drink bleach in the comment section. But I hope you all enjoyed this and I'll catch you all later.